let's look at one more case of finding real zeros. And so we're going to look at p of x equals x cubed plus 5x squared minus 8x plus 2. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is to find my possible. So my possibles come from the first term and the last term. Well, 1 is only 1, and 2 is only 1 and 2. So my only possible zeros are, for the positive side, 1 and 2, and for the negative side, negative 1 and negative 2. Well, as we're looking at this, we also need to know the positive number and the negative number of zeros. So we're going to do our little sign change thing, and there's 1, 2. So there's 2 or 0 positive zeros. And when I change all my signs, we get minus x cubed plus 5x squared plus 8x plus 2. There's only one sign change here, so there's only one negative. So now we're ready to go. The very first thing we do is we set up and we write out a 1, 5, minus 8, 2. And we're going to pick a 0. And I'm going to just start with the positives, because there's two of those. And the negative, I'm going to start with the positive 2. So I go plug the 2 in. That's a 7. That gives me a 14, which is a 6. It gives me a 12, which is a 14. Notice that this is not a 0, so this is not, as, not a 0. So we he doesn't work. We've only got three choices left. And so as we look at this, I want you to notice one more thing. Notice that all of these numbers are positive and this number is positive. So 2 happens to be an upper bound. Now that doesn't actually help us in this problem because 2 is the highest number we could have used anyway. But in another problem, if we had a 4 listed over here, we'd be able to rule him out as well. But there's not, so that doesn't really help us on this problem. Well, since 2 doesn't work, then maybe 1 does. So 1, 5, minus 8, 2, bring down the 1. That's a 6. That's a minus 2. This is a minus 2, and there's our 0. So that means x equals 1 is a 0. And we have a factor of x minus 1. Well, to continue with this, we now have x squared plus 6x minus 2. This is our new function that we get after dividing by x minus 1. But we have a problem here. Notice there's no factors of minus 2 that are going to add up to 6. We don't have any more, but we just found a po one possible rational. So we've already got one. That means we need another one. Well, the only way we're going to get more at this point, because this isn't factorable, is to set this equal to 0 and to solve. And the only way we're going to solve this is if we use the quadratic formula. So x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. In this particular case, that's x equals a minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times a negative 2 all over 2 times 1. Okay, so that's x equals a minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 plus 8 all over 2, 44 over 2. We can bring a 2 out, square root of 11 over 2, and the 2 goes into both the 6 and the 2. So x is minus 3 plus or minus 2. Nope, the 2 goes away, just the square root of 11. So here's our answer. So we got x equals 1, that was one of them, and now we get x equals a minus 3 plus the square root of 11, and x equals minus 3 minus the square root of 11. Well, notice that the square root of 11 is just a little bit more than the square root of 9, which is 3, so this is, this is positive. This is positive, and two negatives is always negative. So here's our two positives we were looking for, and here's our negative. And so we've correctly found all of our zeros, all three of them, the three that we were looking for, for our polynomial function.